imagine the world without electromagnetism there would not have been so many things that we hold dear to us we take it for granted that we can see at all the times of day and night but there was a time not all that long ago in the age before electricity when night brought total darkness and with it terrors you must have seen the horror movies one thing in them is the most important and that is the darkness you set up any horror movie in bright daylight and all the horror is gone you might start seeing the funny side of it and might find the horror a bit comical till now we have studied about force we also know there are four fundamental forces in nature gravitation electromagnetic force weak force and strong force we have covered gravitational force now it's time to understand what is electromagnetic force the better understanding of this force will come after completing the whole part of electricity and magnetism so for now let's first understand what is electricity the first thing we need to understand is the electric charge electric charge is a property of any atom like mass it is of two types positive and negative the si unit of charge is coulombs in honor of charles augustin de coulomb the smallest charge that will be concerned about here is an electron one electron has a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs don't be confused about the unit just like one electron has a mass of approximately 9 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg similarly one electron possess this much charge now another interesting question is how many electrons are present in one coulomb of charge if you do the math you will find there are around 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons in one coulomb of charge this is a mind boggling number 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 means there are 16 zeros after 625 we cannot even imagine that number the charge can either be at rest or in motion when the charge is at rest it only produce an electric field and that too a time independent electric field it it just means that the electric field will not change with time we study about static electricity or electrostatics when the charge is at rest now when the charge is in motion it can be either in uniform motion or non uniform motion when it is in uniform motion it produce time independent electric as well as magnetic field when the charge is uniformly moving we study about current electricity and magnetostatics the charge can also be non uniformly moving when it is so then it produce time varying electric field and time varying magnetic field when the electric field and magnetic field vary they produce electromagnetic waves for example light is an electromagnetic wave we will first discuss about static electricity when the charge is at rest it gives rise to static electricity one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the opposite charges attract each other and the similar charges repel each other that is positive and negative will attract and positive positive or negative negative will repel each other okay so you must have seen various incidences when you take off your sweater then sometimes you can hear a chirping sound also while sleeping if you rub your nails with the blanket then you can see sparkles on the blanket you can stick a balloon on the wall by rubbing the balloon on your hair you can deflect the stream of water by a pvc pipe after charging it all these things happen 
बिकॉज वेन समथिंग इज रब्ड बिकॉज फ्रिक्शन हीट इज जनरेटेड एंड दैट हीट गिव्स द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एनर्जी टू गो फ्रॉम वन एटम टू अनादर एटम ऑफ अ डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट सो दिस ऑब्जेक्ट बिकम चार्ज एंड अट्रैक्ट और रिपेल ईच अदर द ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम विच द इलेक्ट्रॉन गोज बिकम्स पॉजिटिवली चार्ज एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑन विच इलेक्ट्रॉन कम्स बिकम्स नेगेटिवली चार्ज एज डिस्कस्ड द चार्जेस अप्लाई फोर्स ऑन ईच अदर अपोजिट चार्जेस अट्रैक्ट ईच अदर एंड द सेम चार्जेस रिपेल सो देर मस्ट बी अ फोर्स एक्टिंग बिटवीन दैम दैट फोर्स इज कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स इलेक्ट्रो मीन्स रिलेटेड टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड प्रोटोन्स स्टैटिक मीन्स एट रेस्ट एंड फोर्स मीन्स द इंटरक्शन जस्ट लाइक देर इज एन इक्वेशन फॉर ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स फॉर्मुलेटेड बाई न्यूटन चार्ल्स कूलम डिराइव द रिलेशन फॉर इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स ही फाउंड दैट इफ देर आर टू चार्जेस क्यू वन एंड क्यू टू हैविंग डिस्टेंस आर बिटवीन दैम then the force of electrostatic is directly proportional to q1 and q2 and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them the formula is quite similar to that of the force of gravitation i'm just like you i'm just like you you're just like me you're just like me it's something anyone can see if you compare them then in gravitation there are masses in electrostatic force there are charges they both are inverse square laws that means the value of the forces changes with the square of the distance between them but the major difference between gravity and electrostatic force is that gravity only attracts but the electrostatic force can be both repulsive as well as attractive another interesting thing is that electrostatic force is way powerful then gravitational force this law is known as the coulomb's law let's now discuss current electricity when the charge starts moving it gives rise to current electricity first let us understand about voltage current and resistance current current is the rate of flow of electric charge it is like a water current when the water particles move they give rise to water current similarly when electrons move they give rise to electric current the si unit of current is ampere in honor of a scientist ampere 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb of charge flowing per second 1 ampere is a very big value because it means a flow of 1 coulomb that is 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons per second so we use milliampere or microampere as the smaller units now the next question is how does the charge move in a particular direction for this let's take the analogy of water let's suppose in two containers the level of water is different then there will be a net flow of water from one container to another container till the levels are same after the level is same there will not be any net flow of water but still some h2o particles will move from one to two and some will move from the second to the first in a similar manner if there is no height difference or potential difference the charge will move but there won't be a net flow therefore a copper wire which is not connected to a battery does not give you a shock and when there is a potential difference then the charge moves in a particular direction there can be various analogies for example of heat heat flows from high temperature to low temperature gravity in gravity the objects move from high potential to low potential water moves from higher level to a lower level net flow will stop after the levels pressure or temperatures are same another interesting thing to note is in a conductor only the electrons move not the protons the current can be of two types direct current or alternating current 
Direct current is the current in which the direction of the current does not change. In alternating current, the direction of the current change with time. Direct current is of two types, non-pulsating and pulsating. Non-pulsating DC, magnitude constant, direction change. Pulsating DC, direction is constant, magnitude change. In AC, neither magnitude nor direction remains the same. That is, both change. The next thing to understand is potential. Potential is the work done in moving a charge from infinity to a point. Volt is the unit of potential in honor of Alessandro Volta. He was the first person to make a battery if we don't consider August Rishi. Potential difference. Work done per unit charge in moving unit positive charge from one point to other point. Again, the unit of voltage is volt. One thing to note is that current is measured by ammeter and voltage is measured by a voltmeter. We will discuss about them after a while.